There is no use trying, Alice said. One cannot believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the Queen. When I was your age, I always did it for half an hour a day. That's why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. This is a quote from Alice in Wonderland from Lewis Carroll. My name is Alice and I'm deeply influenced by this story. I want to change the world. I want to live in a carbon neutral and more equitable world. But not when I'm in my 70s. I want to live now, as soon as possible. But how can we get there? What should we do? That's the impossible question that I ask myself before breakfast. I believe that women can be the drivers of change that can get us to that world. But if we want to challenge things, if we want to change the status quo, we need to do it through politics. When I think about politics, I think about helping people. Not because of pity or self-interest. They are also part of the political game. But I think a politician is someone that has the duty of caring for others. The duty of shielding the collective public good. Climate action will create a lot of conflicts between public and private interests. I know that I will need to give up on flying so other people that cannot travel as much will have the chance to do it. I know that you and me should avoid using diesel cars every day so we can use this carbon budget for things that really matter, let's say warming houses of people while the heating system is not fully carbon neutral. Do you see? The trade-offs in climate justice are multi-thematic, multi-level and relational. Climate politics is everyday politics and it touches upon every single aspect of our lives. Almost 10 years ago, I left my job as a lawyer in the financial market. I loved my job. It was intellectually rewarding, it provided me comfort, stability, and a lot of money. But I knew that if I wanted to change the reality around me that was so brutally unfair, I needed to go somewhere else. I needed to give up on my comfort zone. And since then, it's getting each time clear that by changing politics ourselves is the only way of tackling the climate crisis. It's not about asking others to do it, it's about us, right here, right now, and everywhere. Climate politics is everyday politics. You can think about it as a global power struggle in which some countries define the priorities and others strive to get in the priority list. And if women don't occupy the spaces of power in this climate game, decisions will be made as they have always been in the, done in the past hundreds of years by old white men. And it's not enough to have one, two, three women in leading positions. We need to have hundreds, thousands at the local, the state, the federal, the international level. Data from the IPU, the Interparliamentary Union, shows that in 2020, only three countries had more women than men holding parliamentary seats in their countries. Rwanda with 61%, Cuba with 53%, and United Arab States with 50%. If we look at Germany and the situation in the Bundestag, which shows how dramatic it is to change this reality. They are changing from 31% to 35, 36% just now, after the recent elections. If I think about my home country, Brazil, only 15% of the seats in the National Congress are held by women. Can you believe that? And this is the best number in almost 100 years. Climate politics is everyday politics 
and it can be about neutralizing all carbon emissions but keeping everything almost as it is now. But it can also be about a deeper transformation. Women of the world do not think only about the pain that climate crisis may cause. Don't think only that women are the most vulnerable and will be the ones suffering the most. This is true, but this is not the whole story. Engage in the fight of climate justice by doing politics yourself, in your work, in your school, in your community, in your family. Climate politics is everyday politics. Imagine if I could give you a bunch of post-its to populate a wall with ideas to solve these two big challenges, the political system crisis and the climate crisis, and come back to me with a strategy. What would you do? This is the kind of challenge that many climate-driven civil society organizations face every day. Whenever they choose to advocate for more ambition in political processes, whenever they choose to mobilize people either online or going to the streets, or even raising awareness of the seriousness of the problem with the bigger population, with complicated messages of the scientific reports. They can amplify the message of change. And think about it, who is pushing the boundaries of climate politics right now? Fahana Yamin, Greta Thunberg, Cristiano Figueres, Luisa Neubauer, Soninha Guajajara, Vanessa Nakati, just to name a few. Do you see a pattern? If I had my post-its right now, I would write three things. First, women need to occupy spaces of power. I know, it's a really difficult decision. Political spaces are really unfriendly for women. But if the current gender imbalance of power remains, we will continue to see incremental but no significant change towards a climate just world. How, you may ask yourself? Well, the starting point is less important than the movement itself. You can try running for a seat in your local council. You can start working for the mayor. One thing that's important, don't fall in the trap of taking care of women things, whatever that means. Remember, climate politics is everyday politics. The second thing I would write is this. Find a civil society organization to support and engage with. The power struggle between society and states is an ongoing thing in our democracies. But these organizations can play a key role in helping organizing, not substituting, this conversation between citizens and politicians. I'm not saying that climate activism is like a fairy tale, but civil society spaces are also places of hope, of friendship, of sense of belonging, of purpose. Our world is getting more and more polarized, we know that. People are eager to speak, to be heard, to feel protected. Climate engagement can help with all of that. Lastly, I would say, Think about the climate implications on everything you do. The way you eat, the way you get dressed, the way you move around, the jobs you have and the job your kids will have in 10 years time. You will realize that it's everywhere. Why not helping other people to see how climate politics is influencing their lives? What about helping an old lady with mobility restriction to become an advocate for more pedestrian-friendly cities? Why not helping an unemployed mother to get a job in the climate field after returning from maternity leave? Why not helping young girls to think of six impossible things before breakfast? There is so much to do, so many opportunities, no time to waste. Women of the world, Climate politics is everyday politics and your leadership is needed to change it. Thank you.